In this video, I'll show you how we can go about creating abstract backgrounds like these in Inkscape using 3D tubes and gradients. I'll also show you how to create this glass morphism effect. To start, I'll go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a large rectangle for the background. I'm going to open the Fill and Stroke dialog and give this a dark blue fill. Next, I'll go to the Circles and Ellipses tool and start creating an ellipse up here, but I'm going to hold down the Control key to create a perfect circle. I'll give this circle more of a cyan fill. Then I'll click this button to give it a linear gradient. I'm going to select the gradient stop at the bottom of the list here, raise the alpha channel all the way up, and make it pink. Now I'll select the first stop, then click this plus button at the bottom to add a new stop at the center. Now make this a darker blue. Okay, now I want to create a path in here that I can use along with the circle to create a 3D tube. To create the path, I'll use the pen tool. And I want the curves to be pretty smooth, so at the top here, I'll choose spiral mode. Now I'll create a path through here. And I'm going to give it a loop, which will look pretty cool with this effect. I'll right click here to finish creating the path. Now I'll go to the select tool and select the circle again. And the circle actually needs to be above the path for the next step. So I'll click this button up here to raise it to the top. Now I'll hold shift and click the path to add it to the selection. Then I'll go up to extensions, generate from path, Scatter. Now I'll go ahead and check Live Preview down here. So by default, Scatter fills up the path with copies of the circles side by side. I want the circles to be overlapping quite a bit, so it all looks more like a tube. To do this, I can use a negative number for the space between copies setting here. I'll type a negative number, then click inside another box to update it. That's definitely not low enough, so I'll try a lower number. The lowest number I can use depends on the size of the object I'm copying, which in my case is a circle. If I go too low, it brings up this error. So I'll click OK here and keep trying until I get the lowest number it will let me use. OK, that looks pretty good, except the whole tube just looks like a solid color. To fix this, I can uncheck the Follow Path Orientation box here. There we go. One more thing I want to do in here is change the original path will be setting to cloned. This keeps the original circle here and uses clones of the circle on the path. This will allow me to change the size and colors of the circle and have the changes also affect the tube. Okay, I'm finished with this dialog now, so I'll click apply and close it out. Now at the moment, the two objects I have selected are the original circle and the original path I created with the pen tool, which is under the tube. I'll hold shift and click the circle to remove it from the selection now I just have the original path selected. I don't need this path anymore, so I'll go ahead and delete it. Okay, now I can select the circle again and use it to make some changes to the tube if I want. For example, I can resize the circle while holding control to maintain the width to height ratio and shift to keep it centered. And when I release the mouse, after a few seconds, the tube will also be resized. I can also change the colors. But I kind of like the colors the way they were, so I'll undo that. I'm also going to put some duplicates of the circle on the background. To do this, I'll right click the circle and choose duplicate, then move the duplicate down here. For this circle, I'm going to delete the first gradient stop in here by selecting it and clicking the minus button at the bottom. Now grab the stop at the center of the line up here and move it all the way to the left. I'm also going to rotate the circle a bit by clicking it again to get the rotation handles, then dragging one of the corner handles. Next, I'll create another duplicate of the original circle and put it over here. I'll delete the center stop of this one and rotate it a bit. Now to hide the parts of the tube that are extending beyond the background rectangle, I can use clipping. To do this, I'll duplicate the rectangle, hold shift and select the tube, then right click and choose set clip. Perfect. I can also go ahead and delete the original circle now since I don't plan to change anything else. Okay, next I'll add a glass panel with some text here at the top right. First, I'll create a rectangle I'm going to grab the circular handle at the top right and drag it down to round the corner some. I'll make this white, then I'll copy it into the clipboard with Ctrl C. I'm going to be using several copies of this later, so I'll be careful to not press Ctrl C again. Next, I'll go to the select tool, select the tube, the circle here, and the background, 
and duplicate them. Then I'll group them together by right-clicking and choosing Group. Now at the bottom of the Fill and Stroke dialog, I'll use the Blur slider to add some blur to this group. Around 15% should be good. Next I'll click this button up here that says Lower Selection 1 Step to put the group below the rounded rectangle. Then I'll hold Shift and select the rectangle, right-click and choose Set Clip. Ok, next I'll go up to the Edit menu and choose Paste in Place, which puts a copy of the rectangle I copied earlier at the original location. With this rectangle, I'll give the effect a slightly frosty texture, which I can do by going up to Filters, Overlays, Cross Noise. Then I'll use the Opacity slider down here to decrease the opacity to about 20%. I'm going to paste in place again using the shortcut Ctrl Alt V. For this one, I'm going to click this button in the Fill and Stroke dialog to give it a mesh gradient fill. Now I'll go to the Mesh tool over here, select all of the mesh nodes, and change them to white, as well as lower the alpha channel to about 20%. Now I'm going to zoom in here by holding Ctrl and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Then I'll select some random nodes and make them fully transparent. This will give it kind of a reflection effect. I'll also adjust the nodes and curves of the mesh a bit so it doesn't look too uniform. Ok, now I'm going to paste in place again. For this one I'll turn off the fill color, then go to the Stroke Paint tab and give it a white stroke with the alpha channel all the way up. Now I'll go to the Stroke Style tab and increase the stroke width a bit. Finally, I'll go to the Text tool and create some text in here. And that's how we can create an abstract background in Inkscape. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.